Welcome everyone. We are live for our mid journey styles training. I'm so excited to have you here. My name is Jonathan Mast and I'm going to be walking you through and sharing where we're headed with everything. So we're going to pop into mid journey today. We're going to be talking about styles that you can use ways to create different types of images and a couple of additional mid journey commands that may prove to be useful to you as well. So let's go ahead and dive in first and let's talk a little bit about mid journey and the styles. If you're new, you may know exactly how mid journey works. If you're, uh, or you may, if you're not new, you may know if you are new, you may not. So let's go ahead and show that to you. So I'm going to go ahead and bring mid journey in here to let's take a look and we'll walk you through a couple of basics. So as you can see on the screen here, I've got something up that may look a little bit different to you if you're not familiar with MidJourney, and that is the fact that MidJourney doesn't work through a traditional website or an app. It actually works through Discord. And so what you're seeing here is actually the Discord application, and we run MidJourney in there. It's not hard to do. If you didn't catch our original 101 Live course with MidJourney, go ahead and check that out. It'll walk you through setup, or just go into perplexity.ai or YouTube and search for MidJourney setup, and it'll walk you through. Super easy to do. But what I want to do today is I want to talk about some different styles and I want to encourage you to hang around if you can. Uh, we're going to try to get everything done here within about 45 minutes or so. If you can hang around till the end, I'm going to give away to everybody a free copy of my mid-journey notes for this presentation. That's going to include each of the styles I talk about, it's going to include a list of uh, 59 or 49 of the most common mid-journey styles that are out there and a link to one of the most exhaustive style guides that I'm aware of that has nearly 5,000 different mid-journey styles in it. So if you'd like that, just stick around. I'd also love your comments as we're going along. We are streaming live here, so would love any comments along the way. I'll do my best to make sure. Julie's already jumped in and said, hi, I really appreciate that. If you would, as you're joining in, if you would just maybe comment whereabouts you're coming from, I'd love to know whereabouts you're from. Uh, see Grant's online. Grant, awesome to see you here. Thank you so much. And then if you guys have questions as we go through, I'd like to make this as interactive as possible. Go ahead and post any comments, questions you've got. Uh, again, whether you're on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, we should be able to get all of that coming into my chat and I'll be happy to answer those questions as soon as I can. We'll try to get to as many of those as we've got. So with all that, I'm going to go ahead and jump on in and we're going to see where we're at. Welcome, Grant. Welcome, Linda. Welcome, Julie. Again, so glad to see you guys here. All right. So I'm going to pop over to Mid Journey and it looks like we're sharing my screen. So everything's good there. I just got to move my buttons out of the way. There we go. So you can see I ran a couple of images here in Mid Journey just to give us an idea as a start. And so what I did to start off with is I just ran a watercolor. So that's one of many things you can use Mid Journey for. By default, if you don't tell Mid Journey what to do, it's going to give you a pretty good quality photo. And let me give you a quick sample of that while we're here. So I'm just going to grab a, I'd say a kitten playing with a ball yarn. And I'm going to try to stick with something similar throughout so that we can continue to make sure we're doing that. Uh, and we'll just run this while we're talking here and I'm showing you other things. So I ran a watercolor here. Uh, you can see it right here at the top. Oh, wait at the top. There we go. There's a watercolor. And then I ran one style. And this will give you guys a quick idea. So here's a watercolor. Let me blow that up. You guys can see that a little bit better. Uh, you can definitely see it's a watercolor style. And I had Mid Journey do that by simply typing watercolor into the beginning. You can see my command was watercolor image of a kitten playing with a ball of yarn. I actually put or yarn when I meant to say of yarn, but that's all right. It figured it out. And then I have in a command called AR. Just if you're new to Mid Journey, I'll try to get, explain a couple of those commands as well. That stands for aspect ratio. And that gives me an image that is 16 wide by nine tall as far as an aspect ratio. I can put a different aspect ratio in and get different styles. But for a lot of things, 16 by nine works really well. So then I went in, I grabbed another style called cubism. And this was the exact same prompt, except instead of saying watercolor, I said cubism. And I wanted to show you what a difference that image can make. So you can see there, there's a cubism style of, again, that kitten playing with a ball of yarn. And we'll go back here real quick to the watercolor. There's the watercolor playing with a ball of yarn. So you can see similar images in some way. Um, there is always, by the way, a degree of randomness that's going to be built in. So then I went ahead and I just told it to use the most current model, the same thing that's going on here. Not a lot of difference with watercolor, but again, sometimes just a bit more detail. Uh, there are three models you can currently use, 5.1, 5.2, and 6. Uh, all these will be done using 6 unless specified otherwise. 
And then I also ran another cubism one just again to keep some consistency here. And you can see as you compare the images, each image again has a degree of randomness that's built in in order to make sure that everything uh, comes through. And this is also why it can be difficult to create consistent images. If we have time today, I'll go ahead and talk about their new CREF command that gives us the ability to create more consistent images, but that's probably a separate class. Uh, and then we also added in a parameter here called style raw. So here's cubism in style raw. Here's cubism without that. And the difference is when I add style raw, it removes mid journeys kind of stylization to the photo. So this is letting mid journey interpret what I think I want in the raw. It's really dropping that out. And you can see it's bringing in more of the cubism aspect at that point, because mid journeys essentially doing less, making fewer assumptions at that point. So really simple stuff. Let's go ahead and go down. So here's the same image, but as a photo. And again, Mid Journey is probably your absolute best bet for photorealistic things right now. And you can see that's the default style. If we just put in, again, just kitten playing with a ball of yarn. And I'm going to stick with my aspect ratio 16 by 9 so that it stays the same. And what I'd like you guys to do, if you have a style you'd like to see, throw it in the comments and I'll make sure I grab that. And I want to go over a whole bunch of styles that are out there just to give you guys a perspective on, again, what those look like and how those can come into being. So the first style, let's go ahead and take a look at it would be Art Deco. So again, we're going to leave our basic command. We always start in Mid Journey, by the way, with Imagine, and then we're going to type in Art Deco, and then I'm going to paste in Image, and then Kitten playing with a ball of yarn. So everything's the same, just added Art Deco Image, and I'll go ahead and create this. And while that's happening, I'm going to go ahead and grab one more. We're just going to jump around in a couple different ones here. I'm going to grab, uh, let's go grab pop art. And again, I'm going to be sharing this list of commands with you guys. You guys will have access to this after the class if you're interested. So let's do the same thing here. Imagine, oops, imagine, there we go. And we're going to put in pop art image. And then I'm going to put in my kitten. There we go. And we'll let that one go. As you can see, every time Mid Journey creates an image, it does create four versions of that. And that can help uh, you as you're moving through the series of things. And you can see some different styles that are popping up here. While that's going on, let's go ahead and grab one more. Uh, let's try something a little bit different like, um, how about, oh, let's see here. There's a lot of them in here. I'm going to grab sci-fi. Let's grab sci-fi. And I know I'm not sharing my list with you guys right now. I will share that with you later, and I'll actually give you the link to the Google Doc so that you can go ahead and use that Google Doc to get anything you want. Let's go ahead and imagine again. We're going to put in sci-fi image, and then we're going to put in our cat, kitten. And there we go. So while that's thinking, let's go take a look. So up at the top here, this is our Art Deco image. Looks a lot like a photo, except for this bottom one. And obviously different styles are going to give us different things. But you can see that definitely a little bit more artistic feel here in some of the boards. Um, this one looks pretty photorealistic, so that may, may be a miss on their part, but that's certainly a possibility. And then we went pop art, and now you can see an entirely different look and style that's coming in here that's just, again, entirely different across the board from what we might have expected uh, with the other ones. And then let's go take a look and see if our new one's done. We went ahead and did sci-fi, and we, oh, it's not quite done yet. It's still thinking, so we'll let it finish up here a minute. Uh, there we go. And there's sci-fi. And you can see it, it still kind of kept with a photo at this point, but brought in a more sci-fi feel. And so the other neat thing we can talk about today is the fact that we can actually combine some of these together. So uh, one of my favorites that you guys may be familiar with as a style is what I call a 3D cartoon image. And if you guys are, uh, oops, I don't want to describe, sorry, imagine, there we go. So I do that one as just a 3D cartoon animation. And then I'm going to paste in our kitten. And let's see what we get there. This is going to give us more of a, uh, a Pixar style, cartoon style type image that will be created. And again, just another of many styles. And again, I'll be sharing these different styles with you guys so that you'll have an opportunity to, to look in and deal with any of those as they come up. Let me make sure I get back to my right window here. We're struggling here with to get back to my live window so I can see where we're at. 
bear with me here. Nothing like uh, running into an issue. So here's our, our 3D kitten. Well, we'll just go ahead and let this run out here a minute. And let's take a look at that. There you can see more cartoon oriented. And again, so the same image, essentially same prompt, a kitten playing with a ball of yarn in multiple different styles that we can take a look at. So let's go ahead and stop sharing here a minute. Just so hopefully I can get back to my screen and say hi to everybody. Let's see here. We're going to try to get into that page. I seem to be locked at the moment, guys, so bear with me here. You can hopefully see me, but uh, I am skating blind, as they say. And let's see what's going on here. We'll try once again. It doesn't want to get me in, so let's try this here and see if I can log in another way. The joys of web-based stuff. We're streaming right now, so hopefully you're seeing everything. Um, let's see here. Yep. Okay, I'm live. I can see that. That's good. Uh, wonderful stuff going on. So I see Linda's looking for a whimsical cottage core style. I like that, Linda. That's a great thing to do. Let's go ahead and share that and see what we can do. So I'm going to go back and share my mid-journey screen, uh, assuming you, know, you can get back in. So I apologize, we're definitely running into a technical issue here and I don't know why. Worst case, I will exit and come right back and hopefully we won't lose the live session. Uh, if we do, we'll we'll make the best of it one way or the other. We'll definitely figure it out here. Uh, let's see here. The joys of technical difficulties. All right, so I am fortunate enough I can see that I'm live, but I need to now figure out how to share my screen again. All right. Guys, bear with me if you would here. We'll, we will try to get this figured out. We're just going to go ahead and make a couple of changes here. Let's see here. If I can maybe change my menu. There we go. Just had to do a couple clicks. Now we're back where we want to go so I can share my screen again. Let's go back and do that. Thanks, guys, for your patience while we went through that. Nothing like technical difficulties live. All right. So let's bring our mid-journey back up. There we go. And we're going to go share and do the same thing. So again, we're going to go to imagine. And if you guys have got a style that you want, go ahead and throw it in the comments. And just like we're doing here, I'm going to go ahead and put that in. So whimsical cottage. Uh, and I'm just going to just leave off the core style. I don't know we'll need that necessarily. And let's see what happens and where we get that. So this will be interesting because we're asking for, you know, a, a, a look and a feel. And that's all styles really are, everybody. It's we're, we're creating a look and a feel. The other thing that I want to share with you, and if we get to the chance to, to share the resource with over almost 5,000 styles, you can also name in here anytime you want, like a famous photographer, a famous painter, anybody like that. So if you've got a, a favorite style, in fact, next time we'll do a Van Gogh here, and I'll, I'll uh, go ahead and share that and see how that goes across. We'll let this go ahead and keep working for just a moment here and make sure that we're getting everything where we want. All right, that should be about, there we go, that's done. And so now you can see we've got that. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And a whimsical cottage. So I'm guessing we were kind of looking for this upper right version, but it's given us some other perspectives. And this is one of the good things to share as we go through this. Not all of the time are we is it going to listen perfectly to what we want. If we want it to listen better, we actually can go ahead and put it. Well, we it actually added style raw there for us for some reason. So that's interesting. Let's try to see if we can do that without. All right, we're getting a bunch of other ones coming through. Um, so Linda asks, doesn't naming a person's style border on infringement? Well, you know, I suppose it depends on perspective. I am of the belief that if I'm looking at something for inspiration and I use that, in this case, let's do a Van Gogh as an example. Uh, so I'm going to, oops, got to get the right command in here. There we go. Um, and I'm going to put in a Van Gogh and then we're going to put in the kitten. I don't believe I'm necessarily at this point going to be infringing on any of Van Gogh's imagery per se, because again, it's, it's using that for inspiration. Now, obviously if it bothers you, don't go ahead and do that. I regularly, for example, in the cartoon image, like I have up here, I regularly will use in reference, say in the style of Pixar or the style of Disney. I'm not looking to recreate any images that Disney's done or that Pixar's done, but I am definitely trying to figure out ways to put things together and get certain styles that I like. 
So, uh, you know, again, where you feel on that, I'll leave that up to you. But let's take a look here as the Van Gogh one comes up. And again, just by referencing an artist, hopefully we're going to get something that would be akin to his style of painting uh, if we were to do that. And we'll go ahead and try another one. I see Julie just put in traditional folk art. So we'll do that one next. In fact, I'll get that one started while this one's finishing. Imagine traditional folk art. And let's put in the kitten. And looks like while we did that, the Van Gogh version is done. So there you go. You can definitely see much more painter style. Some may fit your desires differently than other. And certainly, I think here's a good example, going back to your question, Linda, about infringement. These four images, in my mind, are quite a bit different from each other, even in strokes that are showed and all that. And so I think there's a lot of difference. This, in my mind, is like, you know, if you go to an art class, you're going to be told in an art class for the first series of, of trainings to actually learn how to mimic some of the masters. They're going to have you look at the master's works and try to mimic those. And I don't think that we're even mimicking here. So again, that's my perspective. You're certainly welcome to your own. Uh, here we come up about folk art. Let's take a look here. We're almost done. There we go. And let's do that. Again, a very different start and style. Uh, again, some may be close to folk art, some may not be. I'm guessing Julie was thinking maybe something over here like our lower left uh, created. And this is why you're going to create multiple images. When we're using Midjourney, by the way, it always creates four images across the board. So you've always got that going on. All right, I'm going to go back to comments here a minute and see we've got a couple things I haven't read. Grant asked a question, uh, can I, in the style of, such as referring to a particular artist or filmmaker? I can. That's actually kind of where we're talking, Grant. So let's go ahead and do that one here just a minute. So let's go ahead and we're going to imagine. In this case, I might want to put my prompt first. So let's go ahead and put in kitten playing with a ball of yarn. And then I'm going to just put a comma in the style of, and let's go ahead and pick uh, Ansel Adams here. So if you're not familiar, Ansel Adams was a black and white landscape photographer. So we may or may not get something we want, but let's take a look here at what it's going to create. And I want you to notice you can put your styles at the beginning or at the end. The key is you want to put them before you put in any of your other commands like your dash dash AR or style raw or anything like that, just in order to get the best uh, results for that. So again, good questions. We've got a bunch more coming in. Um, so uh, let's see, how about the style of Tim Burton? Oh, that would be a good one, Grant. We'll definitely do that. Um, that's a very good one. Linda, I want to thank you for your question too. That was a really good question about infringement. You're going to find different, different perspectives on that. The one thing I want to share is that, again, I'm not an attorney, but at the moment here in the United States where I'm based at, and I know some of you guys are, um, the courts have, have ruled that AI images cannot be copyrighted at the moment. Uh, they have not dealt with the whole infringement thing. I don't imagine that'll be settled for quite some time. Again, do what you're comfortable with. And if it's not something you're comfortable with, then move on. So here's Ansel Adams. You can see we got a great black and white. It understood enough about Ansel Adams that it created, uh, again, a kitten that would possibly be the way Ansel Adams might have done that. So let's go the style of Tim Burton. That's a great one. And one of the things I want to really mention to you guys is we're coming up with styles. These may not be some of the 5,000 styles that I'm going to share with you. Um, anybody that you can think of that likely the AI model, in this case, Midjourney would know, you can use as a style to put in here. So again, we're going to just put kitten playing with a ball of yarn in the style of Tim Burton. And let's see what happens. We'll go ahead and get that one created and, and working as well. Um, so again, any, by the way, while we're waiting, just so you know, if I want any one of these images, so let's go up to the Van Gogh here a minute. Uh, and let's say I like this orange tabby over here. Uh, I can, that's going to be image number two. So these are in a, in a grid. So image number one is upper left. Image number two is upper right. Image number three is lower left. And image number four is lower right. I can go over here and I can upsize any of these by clicking on the U. So let's go ahead and upsize number two. That would be that orange tabby. And it's going to go ahead and create a higher version. I can also create variations. So if I like version three here, but I want to create variations on that, I can just click on V3 and it will automatically come up and let me create variations on that particular image. I'm going to have to scroll down to the bottom to get that. So here's our Tim Burton style. Really good call on that, Grant. That that turned out really cool. I like those. Those are That's actually a style I've never tried. And I think that's super cool. So great, great idea there. 
So here we can see, here's the upscaled version of that Van Gogh kitten. And if you can see, as you're coming across, the detail in here can get pretty good. We can even go ahead and stylize that further to bring in additional paint details and things like that if we want. But that's pretty good. I get to see the, the brush strokes and everything here. So I think that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> And then let's go ahead and take a look here. I did a variation, if you guys remember, on a Van Gogh playing with a ball of yarn. So just as a reminder, that was this lower left one right here. And I asked it to create variations. And when you do that, it brings in a lot of randomness. And you can see, so we've still kind of got a painter style. It did bring in a variation, but notice the cat is similar in color and looks fairly similar, but yet is in different poses and things like that. So that's just a way you can continue to, to uh, get new and new versions out of this and, and new styles as we go across. All right, so we've got that. I want to go and talk about a couple of other things related to this that may help you guys as you're going through. So one of those is what we call the stylize parameter. So let me get back here to mid journey. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick this one. I like that image three again. So I'm going to say I want to create a version of image three once again. Actually, you know what? We'll just do this one. I like all these. So I'm going to, I can click the redo and it's going to give me new, but I'm going to add in a new stylize option here. We're going to try to get rid of the style raw. I'm not sure why it's adding that in. And I'm going to put in S. And stylize, we can do anywhere from zero to a thousand. A thousand is majorly stylized. And we're going to do one just to show you here. And then we'll do one in a zero, which would be essentially none. The default for mid journey, by the way, when you're using it is stylize of a hundred. So if you don't put anything in, you're going to get stylized at a rating of a hundred. So we're creating a thousand. Let's go back and do a zero as well. And just, you know, when you do commands like that, and that'll be a separate class that we do, let me know in the comments if you'd like an entire masterclass done just on the various commands like aspect ratio and style and, and stylize and all that. There's a lot of them. Uh, it would take a whole class, but I'd be happy to do that. But in this case, notice we do a dash dash command space and then the relevance. So dash dash AR space 69 for aspect ratio dash dash S zero in this case to create one with zero stylization. So as we're pulling these up, let's take a quick look here and we can compare those. Uh, Grant, thank you. I'd love to know that we'd like that class. So here is our standard. This is that would be stylized 100. We've got some great stuff coming in here. Hopefully you guys can see some nice style. We get to see the hair pretty clearly. We can see paint stuff. We can even see in the yarn some detail here. And it's certainly if I, if I zoomed in on that, we'd see even better. Let's go ahead and take a look. So this was stylized 1,000. And now if you can notice in here, we're going to get some additional things. We're getting much more detail and much more style on the cat. Lots more individual whiskers and individual fur bits. I'm getting additional bits in the yarn. Let's go ahead and blow this one up here just a minute so you guys can see that on the upscale three. See a larger version. And while we're doing that, oh, here, it did it already. You can zoom in here. You can see lots more style. So that S1000, that stylized, really helps give us additional level of detail. Sometimes it's maybe more detail than we want. I'll admit my personal preference is right around a stylized 300 to 500 in most cases. Again, default for Mid Journey is going to be stylized 100. This, if you remember, was stylized zero. So the exact same prompt we put in, but just by changing the stylized part, we now got a Van Gogh, but in a zero stylized. And you can see very different type images that are being created as a result of that. So additional ways that you can create fun is not only using styles, but then using the stylized command, which is a dash dash S space. That will give you lots of information there uh, that you can put in place to, to again, change the level of styling that is there for you. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. We've got a couple more things I wanted to talk about related to that. Uh, one of the other big ones I wanted to talk to you about was what's called the chaos one. So chaos is a parameter that influences how varied the initial image grids are. And what I mean by saying is that, that we get four images that pop up as you can see when we're doing one, and we wanna define how varied those are. So let's go ahead and we're gonna go back to our base prompt here. Oops, I forgot to put my imagine in, there we go, imagine. There's our base prompt. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back up to just my stylized 500 to get some more detail in there, but not too much. 
So that's S500. And again, that's a scale of one to a thousand. And then I've got a chaos that I can add. And it's a zero to 100. Zero is, means all four images that we get are going to look very similar. We'll do that one first. And then I'm going to do the same exact prompt, but with a chaos of 1000, or I'm sorry, 100. So we can see the differences between that image grid. And you'll see how chaos helps determine the relevancy of those specific image grids. And you'll see the difference in those four images that come up so that we can play with those. All right, we've got a couple questions while we're waiting here. A uh, good question from Linda. What's the difference between dash S and style, dash dash stylize? So I believe those are gonna be exactly the same. Linda, let me look at my documentation here real quick before I do that. Um, so I don't know, actually, I actually don't know if stylize is one. It would actually just be style dash dash style um and that would would change that so as opposed to stylize the good news is we can find out real quick because we can type it in and see what happens before we do let's go back to what we were talking about real quick and then we'll test that linda so here was the style or i'm sorry the chaos zero and in other words we want all four images to look quite similar and you can see there's quite a bit of similarity there's some difference in here but there's quite a bit of similarity then if we want to go to the stylize or I'm sorry, Chaos 100, which would be, I want them to be very different. Look, in this case, we've got four quite different images that, from the same prompt. In fact, three of them don't even look Van Gogh-like at all. The top one does, but the rest of them don't look like that at all. And so that's how Chaos can fit in. So Linda asked the question about stylize, and I, Linda, if we put it in and it doesn't work, it's gonna just tell us that we can't use that prompt. So let's go ahead and let's put that in. And instead of using dash dash S for our style, let's try dash dash stylize and see what happens. And let's put in 500 again. If we can't use this command, it will literally tell us that it's we've entered an invalid command and we'll do that. So I wanna make sure I'm spelling that right, stylize, I think so. And let's see what happens. Okay, it took it. So what are we gonna find out here? It may be the same thing. So nothing like finding out live in the midst of a class. I've actually used style and S interchangeably, but never used stylize. Oh, and I take that back. I don't know what I'm talking about because style raw is here. Okay, so Linda, you are correct. I am, my ADD kicked in and my brain just went into fart mode. I apologize, guys. So you're right, dash dash S and dash dash stylize are exactly the same. So very, very simple. And we'll be able to see that come in here with that same type of quality. So good question on that, Linda. Thank you for asking and apologies that my brain took a break there for a minute and couldn't remember what we were doing. So a great way to, again, cover that and, and make sense. Hopefully, again, you guys know. So most of the commands are like that. Chaos is the same way. I can use dash dash C or dash dash chaos. Either one will work and give me the exact same. And again, if you stick around here in just a couple minutes when we wrap things up, I will share the link to the document that I've got. And that will actually make sure that uh, you guys can get access to uh, all of the things that we're talking about here and going through that. So let me ask you guys a question. I'm, I've been doing a similar, simple thing with this cat and the yarn ball, just so you can see how things go. Do you either have a style that you'd like me to do, or do you have another image type that you'd like, or any other questions? Um, I've got, would love to answer any questions you've got here as I go back to my notes here. Uh, the last thing that I want to cover for, actually two more, I don't want to say last, that's, that's dangerous. So two things I want to do. Um, let's take this last item here that we've got, and we wanna go ahead and maybe redo this. But let's, as I take a look at it, let's say that uh, I don't like the orange yarn. So I can then do a redo on this. And at the end, I'm gonna type in no space orange yarn. By doing this, I'm actually giving it a no command that tells me I want it to recreate these images, but I don't want a specific aspect of this. In this case, I don't want orange yarn showing up. Uh, and so that's something that can be super helpful if you get images that start popping up regularly that have things you don't want in them. So Grant makes a great comment. He says it would, it would, it would be a gift if Midjourney would share their style catalogs and subcategories, although uh, it may just be entirely flat. I, I think the, the issue here, Grant, and I'm assuming, I don't know, uh, it's a really good point. I think the issue is the fact that the model isn't necessarily 
pre-trained with specified styles, I think that we're able to define any style that we can come up with and it's using its information in order to best figure that out. Uh, so I think that's probably why they haven't done that. So here's an example and notice at this point, we have no orange balls of yarn. I said no orange yarn, may have thrown a little bit in this one, but overall I didn't end up with an orange ball of yarn uh, so that's how we can use the no command. And that can be super, super effective as we're going through that. Um, and again, I am just as a reminder, if you joined us late, I am going to go ahead and share uh, the list of all my notes that I put together creating this that will include all the commands I've went over as well as a reference list. Uh, let me go ahead and stop share. I'll just show you guys the site here real quick. Uh, here we are. And let me get back in and share the window. There we go. So this site I'll share with you. You don't have to screen capture this. Um, but this site has literally 4,970 different styles. And something you go, wow, well, a lot of those are going to be similar. So we've got different, for example, painters here. There's eight or four different six different painters here. I can't remember six different painters just by recommending or by putting in a name style, we can get different. So the difference between a keys van Dangen, and if I mispronounce that, I apologize. And a Pasita Abad are very, very different, obviously, because they're going to have different styles and I can use this again. I'll give you this. It's got a full search so you can go through, you can find all kinds of things. I gotta admit this one looks kind of fun. Let's grab this and try this. This might be a lot of fun. Looks like he's got an interesting style. Uh, John Lasseter also looks like he's got an interesting style. In fact, I think I like that better. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. And let's go back. But I'm going to give you a link over here so that you can get access to all these and you can play around to your heart's content with those. All right, let's go ahead and share back on the mid journey. And we're going to go ahead at this point and we're going to try that command that I just saw because that looked really cool. I like that. Part of the fun in this is just going through and figuring out different styles that are out there. So style of, and then I'm going to paste in again my normal cat. So let's go kitten playing with a ball of yarn and enter. And if you remember, that was a really interesting style. At least I thought it was interesting. And since I'm doing the master class, I get to pick right now. Uh, we'll see what that comes up with and go from there. Um, so yes, I will definitely drop that in the chat as well. Let me do that for you real quick here. Good question. Can we drop that in the chat? We can. And let me go back here, moving around my tabs. Tamika, there you go. Good question. There is that in the chat. You should be able to see it on all platforms. The link again, I will also leave you guys when we're done here, the Google doc link that will let you go ahead and access the Google doc with all my notes. Let's take a look at this. That's kind of cool. I like it. It's almost a, an animated, cartoonish, but a little bit different style. I really, really like that. In fact, I love this little pitch. I love the look on that kitten's face. Let's blow that one up just so we can take a look at it. I love that. Take a look. Yeah, I got to admit, I think that's really cool. It's got some good style. I can see a little fuzz on the yarn. I can see that. And I just absolutely love the look on the kitten's face. Like, uh-oh, am I in trouble now or what? That is cool. That is cool. So again, this is why styles can be so much fun because we can try all kinds of different things and put all kinds of different things together, which I think just makes life a whole lot more interesting overall. Uh, so love that. Uh, <laughs> I like that. Great. Yeah. Hello Kitty meets Chucky. Yeah. That's kind of what we're looking at there. I, I like it though, but it, it makes a lot of sense. So, all right. So see, we're here. Let me go ahead and grab the link to my Google doc. I'll share that here in the comments. You guys are welcome to that as well. I'm going to just make sure that it is available to anyone. Grab the link. Done. And I'm going to throw that right here in the chat. So if you guys have Google Docs, you should be able to just click on that link uh, and see that. I'm also going to go ahead in case anybody needs that. Uh, I will send that out with the replay. If you guys registered for this, I'll send that out with the replay link as well. And let me throw it up as a caption here real quick. I don't, that's going to be hard to grab. Never mind. I'm going to throw it up as a caption because it's way too long to copy and paste. So we won't do that. Um, but you go ahead and uh, grab it out of the chat there and you should be able to do that real good. Uh, if anybody can't see that, please let me know and I'll go ahead and put that over as well. All right, guys. So that's, that's a quick overview on styles. Just so you know, uh, as I go over to our notes section, let me just show you the document that I shared so you guys can see that real quick. Uh, and I'll show you some of the styles that we put in place there. 
hang on as i get back i gotta click on the right buttons there we go so as we go into this document you'll see that there's a, a lot of different things here i talk about the style parameter basically that's the raw uh, i talk about stylize or the s parameter the one that linda brought up that she stumped me on for just a moment uh the chaos parameter the no parameter um also i didn't have a time to go over this one i again i want to respect everybody's time but you can also use what's called an sref command if you've got another image and you want it to match that style you can actually upload that image in the mid journey and then grab the url for it and then say use that style using sref uh, and you can actually mid journey will look and analyze that style and then give you that style back and then here's a bunch of styles we've got from steampunk and art deco you can see all list of 49 plus of them there there's a bunch of them and then I've got a link there for our mid-journey uh, styles that we went. The last thing I want to show you is if you're really trying to create some unique stuff, I've got an, a prompt for a prompt here. And again, this is in the document, so you can copy and paste it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share this. I and mean, what this does is you can go to ChatGPT or Claude or anything else. I went to Claude in this case. And you can have it write you a prompt for mid-journey. So let me show you what that looks like here a minute. Let's go back in. I'm going to share my Claude window. Uh, if you aren't familiar, Claude is a competitor to ChatGPT, and I use it quite a bit, so we can see that here. So I went ahead and I did, and I pasted it, just literally copy and paste it in that prompt that I sent you. You guys, there are a number of variables you can change. And based upon that, it basically says, please analyze this and let me know when you're ready so I can tell you what I want. I did. It said, okay, I'm ready. I said a kitten playing with a ball of yarn. And now it gave me two different prompts. And we're going to go over to Mid Journey and run both of these. I'll share my Mid Journey screen here in just a minute so you guys can see that. I'm just going to literally paste each of them in there. In this case, because of the way I prompted it, it's going to give me photo style because that's what I asked it to do. And again, I'll walk you through that prompt here in just a minute while that's creating. So let's go back to our Google Doc because I think that will be easier to, to record easier to review on the screen there we go i can find my words i have been talking more than a couple days believe it or not there we go so here's what this says i'd like you to take the role of a prompt engineer with an expertise in image creation assisting me in crafting prompts for an ai art generator that would be mid journey by the way i'll provide you with my brief content ideas and your task will be to expand these into detailed unambiguous and coherent prompts then I say, when developing the prompts, and again, you guys can copy your, this right out of the document I shared with you, describe the content and the style of the images using clear and accurate language. It's helpful to include references to popular photographers, because I wanted this to be a photo. We could change that to painters or illustrators or anything else that we might want. In fact, let's make this fun. Oh, I won't change the document, but you can change that if you want. And then use the following formula for creating the prompts. So I wanted a photo, so it says photo of, and then I, it will include that here. This is how it's gonna do it together. In other words, I don't need to change these unless I want to. I wanted realistic digital photography. Uh, I wanted inspired by a potential or a popular photographer. I wanted it brightly lit, so I put in the colors automatically. I wanted vivid and realistic colors. And I even went so far as to specify a camera and a camera lens to make sure that that all got together. You guys can change any aspects of this, but if you don't, you could just, for example, we could literally just get rid of the camera and lens part. And don't worry, I'll put it back. And it would then specify the camera and lens that it thought was appropriate. So if you don't want to give information, you don't have to. But if you have specific information, like medium, I just then put in high resolution, realistic ultra photography. I could have let it pick that for me. So hopefully that makes sense as we're taking a look at that. Let's go back in the mid journey and let's see what we got with those. All right, so let me share my window again. There we go. And we're back to mid-journey. All right, let's take a look at what we got in these images. All right, so the first, here is the first one that we had. Those are cute. I got to admit, guys, those are just cool images. So again, that's based on the Claude prompt that gave us a mid-journey prompt. So if you're not sure how to do that or you want to try something a little bit different, that's a great way to do it. And here's the second version. You can see very different image overall, still very nice, both, but both are very unique in the way they're done. And if you're looking for ways to, again, learn about styles and learn ways to do that, this is a great way to go ahead and put that together 
and be able to do that and pull that in. So you have that directly in the document as well. So you guys should be able to pull that up at, at any point in time. Uh, we've got literally about five minutes left, guys. Are there any questions you'd like me to answer as we go through? Everybody should have access to that document, which should have everything you need in it, all my notes and all the links so you guys can have access to that. Um, I, let me ask you a question while we're here. We had a couple of you respond, but I'd like to hear from you more. If one, if you'd like me to do a separate course just on the commands, like the style or stylize and the chaos and all that, just let me know down in the comments and just play, uh, let's put one that says command, and then I'll go ahead and if we get enough people that are interested, I'll put together a master class for that as well that we can stream and go for. Uh, the other thing I would really love to do is I love just a little bit of feedback. I don't need your accolades, although I do like them. What I'd love, if this was valuable, would you just put a one in the comments so I can see this was valuable for you? Uh, I take a couple hours putting these together. I'm happy to do that. I enjoy the training, but if I love to know if it's good or not. I see some commands. I see some yes, pleases. That's good. Thank you. Uh, I just appreciate your feedback to know what we can do again across the board. Thank you for the positive comments. My goal, just as a reminder to you guys, is to make these beneficial to you. Uh, I, I know a lot of stuff. I love to teach. And so I want to add value. So please always give me feedback on how we can provide better value. Uh, that's that's beneficial. Quick shameless plug for me. If you guys like this and you want more of this, but maybe more one-on-one, -on -one, I know when I do webinars like this, it's not as personal. I do have a monthly coaching program that I offer. It's $99 a month. There's a link in the document if you're interested, and that gets you access to a special community. It's not part of my normal Facebook group or anything else. It's actually over on school, an entirely different platform for me and my team to work with you and help you and do coaching. Plus, we do live coaching sessions just just for that group uh, twice a month. If you're interested, that's where we can really dig in and help you guys out. Just look down in the footer. You'll see a link. You don't have to. I'm going to continue to do free stuff. I love doing that. And that's part of my abundance mentality. But if you want maybe a little bit more direct help or you want to go, like, Jonathan, how can I work with you and work through some specific issues? That coaching program that we do in a group setting may be a good solution for you. So uh, Grant just asked a question here. Let's, let's see here. Why did I decide to major? I haven't read the whole thing, so it's always dangerous. I'm bringing these up. Grant sometimes gets gets good questions, and let's see what we've got here. Uh, question, if there's time, why did you decide to mid-journey over other AI generators? That's good. Um, real candidly, Grant, I think mid-journey is the best one. Um, Dolly, as you guys know or may know, comes bundled with ChatGPT, but... Other than infographic style images, I just don't see and believe that it's nearly as good of an image generator. It's not bad, but I do a lot of photorealistic stuff, and it absolutely, in my mind, Dolly does not hold a candle to mid-journey when it comes to photorealism. Uh, the other one is um, uh, that's real popular, and there are a lot. I'm not going to hit them all, but the other one that's real popular is Leonardo. I think it's between the two, uh, and I like Leonardo, but I don't use it very much. Ultimately, the reason I love Midjourney is because one, I think it's, excuse me, the best, but also I like their licensing model the best. I am not an attorney, so I don't mean to give any way of, of legal advice here whatsoever. But when I read the licensing model that Midjourney provides me as a business owner, I'm much more comfortable using those images than I am using from anybody else. Microsoft and ChatGPT have come out and said you can use their images for commercial purposes and that that's fine and that's probably sufficient. Uh, but I believe Midjourney's policy is a little bit better. Plus, I'm paying for a license in this case, so I'm actually having an exchange, which, as I understand from a legal perspective, means I have more rights to expect things than if I'm not. So, again, uh, that's those are the reasons I picked MidJourney. I hope that makes sense uh, and the reasons I've done that. Um, so, yes, the Linda, you asked about all of my master classes like this that I do are streamed on Facebook. Let um, me share that. Uh, they're, they're streamed on Facebook, they're streamed on YouTube, they're streamed on LinkedIn and on, on X or Twitter. Uh, and so all those classes are the the, the coaching classes that I mentioned. Those, are, those That's a paid coaching class. Those are not. Those are private. Um, those are only available in the school community that I'm part of. Uh, if you're a member of the coaching group, you do get access to that. You get access to me and my team. And again, we do more one-on-one -on -one stuff there where we actually work through things with you. Uh, the last one-on-one -on -one training or the last live group training we did, we actually only had one person on. And that's okay. So that person got private training from me. We walked through, answered their questions, worked on their issues. Uh, and those replays are made 
made available, by the way, but only inside of our school community. Uh, those are not streamed out to the Facebook group or anywhere else. So good question, Linda. Thank you for asking. I want to thank everybody for joining here. That's that's great. Um, so thank you so much for being part of this today. I love your feedback. I appreciate all that you guys do. If you're not part of our free Facebook community, certainly uh, join us there if you want more free help. Let me see if I've got that up, if I can throw that up here really quick. Uh, I don't see it, but here, here's a link. If you guys want, um, if you just go to jonathanmass.com slash linktree, you'll see a link to the free Facebook group there, as well as my courses and everything else. Um, that'll get you quick access to everything. Uh, again, I just want to thank everybody for being part of this. And I would love your feedback, by the way. If you're connected with me on social media or you're in any of my groups, please let me know if the types of classes that you would like to see related to whether it be MidJourney, ChatGPT, Claude, Google Gemini, or any of the others, let me know. And if we can get enough interest, I'll put together one of these master classes. And for those of you wondering, yes, this replay will be posted uh, live on, again, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, now called X, and on Facebook. With that, everybody, make it a great day. Thank you so much for joining us, and we will see you.